already. Already. Your mind has raced backward. It is already beginning to be reconnected with the pressures of this world. It is already hurrying backwards, searching within itself, trying to find solutions to problems that are weighing you down. Mm -hmm. And you are saying that no one understands my situation. No one really knows what I'm going through or what I've been through. Mm. You are more tired than what your physical appearance reveals. You are more unhappy than your salutations to others reveal. You are more hungry than your communication revealed when you were speaking with your associates. You are more lost than you have ever been, yet you are conveying that everything is all right. Your mind has raced back. It has hurriedly gone to a place that it knows, but it's not a comfortable place for you. Mm. It's a place of trial. And it's a place of isolation. It's a place of being unknown. It's a place of negative reflectiveness. Mm -hmm. While you should be advancing forward in God, the enemy and the flesh has drawn you again back to that which is already past. Mm -hmm. And it has made it appear more real. It has not allowed it to stay in its place. It has made it the reality of your today. It has made it your right now, even though it was yesterday or an hour ago or this morning or last year. It has given it new life at the point when you should have overcome it or be overcoming it you're now being beat down by it again. For example, here's a farmer. He's worked his field. He's worked his fields. Mm -hmm. And he's well into the growing season. And he looks over his fields and he doesn't see anything coming up out of the ground. Mm. He looks around at the other farmers and he noticed that their fields are covered with this beautiful green covering. Mm. And he looks again at his fields where he has toiled from sunrise to sunset, not with the best of equipment, but with the best that he has, just like you. Mm -hmm with the best that he has and time has passed and he has the reasonable expectation that there should be some evidence of the work that he has done. But lo, as the sun is setting on this day, he is more sorrowful. For he was sorrowful yesterday but today he's more sorrowful because he looks at his field and he doesn't see any evidence of the work that he has done. Come on. He knows that he has planted the seeds in the ground and he knows that it was a difficult planting. He recalls 
that he was out in his field laboring well past sunset doing the best that he could because time was running out to get the seeds in the ground. Many times his equipment, his tractor, his cultivator, his plow would break down and it would consume immense parts of the daylight. And while he labored to repair it so that he could go back to work, he became consciously aware of the daylight that was passing and not affording him the time to plant his seeds. Mm -hmm. He grew wary in understanding that perhaps sowing time was passing him by. Mm -hmm. And up inside of him began this urgency to push to get the seeds planted. Mm -hmm. But that was weeks ago. And now, while he's trying to finish up the last few acres, the fields where he's worked, he passes by them and he's discouraged. He looks. There is evidence that he has been in the field. The grass and the weeds that used to be there, they're not there anymore. And the clumps of clay and rocks that were there, they're not there anymore. The fellows that he has plowed so that the seeds might have a place of birth, he can see them and they stretch from here to there. But where there stops is another farm. And he knows where this other farm is because he can see the green. Their ground is being covered from the planting of their seeds. But his sown in the same time, in the same season, not a one, not even a one. Mm. And he's worried because he has not an answer for this situation. And he knows that if his crop does not come up, he's going to go under. He's got to have the crop. And it has a growing season. It's got to grow for a certain amount of time to produce the abundance of its fruit. Okay. And he's looking and he's seeing that nothing is going on. At first, he was just tentative. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So he walks the field of yesterday looking for the hope of a seed anywhere. But he found not a thing. And his tomorrows became more and more. And then yesterday he was most sorrowful. And today he's even more sorrowful as he is beginning to bear the burden of the wonderment of where is my crop? Where is it? I've done everything I know to do. I've labored hard and long in these fields. I still have fields to do. But I don't know if I should keep on working now. 
Because all the work that I have done, as I look back over the fields, I see no evidence mm. of a crop. Now you understand a little more. Because the Spirit has now begun to speak to you with intensity. Because you find yourself now looking back over your life. Over the fields where you have planted the seeds in season. And you have observed over time that there appears to be no crop. And you look over beyond the boundaries of your ability to plant. And you've seen the covering of green and the flourishing of their fields. And you've said to yourself, we have come through the same passage of time. While they were working their fields, I was working mine. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of rocks that I had to move. And sometimes it got very difficult. Things got in my way that made it impossible for me to labor during the day. And while they had sanctuary in the evening of their work, there I was laboring after the sunset, trying to get my seed into the ground. And years and years have passed. And there is no crop for me. Even when I look at the field, hoping that even in today, I might find just one spring breaking the ground. I look back and I see no evidence of my work. I'm getting tired because I've still got fields to plow that lay ahead. I don't know if I want to keep on doing this if this is what it's going to look like. Uh -huh. <laughs> because over there, they are well into their growth season. Their crop is not a little crop anymore. <laughs> it's well above the ground and the grass, the weeds, the, nothing is there except for the seed. <laughs> the crop is proving its Self. And I feel like I should not look like this. I'm looking barren and feeling hopeless. I'm wondering, have I wasted all of my life? Are the delays that I have labored, have they been in vain? I'm not doing this out of not seeing or observing. I see what happening all around me. All around me. Things have grown up and have multiplied even the more. They've had a successful season of growth over there. I don't understand what has happened, but they planted a crop when I did. And it's already full grown and they're in their harvesting. And my Mine, 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 mine. <laughs> mine hasn't even broken the ground. Uh -huh. Lord God, won't you help me please? Because if I don't see something <laughs> soon and very soon, <laughs> I know that I'm going to give up <laughs> because it looks hopeless for me. <laughs> I'm out here now getting ready to do another feel. <laughs> and it looks just like all the other places that I've been. Maybe the problem is the land. Maybe I've been sowing in the wrong places. What you're saying is maybe my life has just been too messed up. That's why I can't produce any crop. That's why I have to be satisfied with this barrenness. I was so sorry yesterday when I saw the joy of the new birth in that family. And now here am I desiring to have the
the child. And I've been barren for 40 long years. Planting the seeds like I'm supposed to, oh Lord. Why is it that I'm the one looking back and seeing no evidence of growth? Why over here they just started last year and they're having a harvest already. I tell you, I'm feeling sorry right now. And I am about to give up on the work. I'm wondering why should I keep on going out to these fields? Nothing is producing a crop. And when I think I'm just about done, and then I look ahead and I see that the field seems to be never ending. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm not sure I can do this another day. Yesterday, when I went in, I felt like it was the end, and that I would never come out and go in the field again. But this morning, when I rose, I felt a movement deep down inside of me. It said, get on up and get out there in that field. Don't you worry about how things look. I'm going to change your circumstance. Don't you worry about what's going on over there. I am your God and I will take care of you. Amen. Get on up out there and do what I told you to do. Don't worry about the shame that they're putting on your name. Because soon I'm going to give you a great harvest. But you've got to finish the work. You're not finished yet. I want you to know. I know what you're going through. I want you to know I've been where you've been. Come on. Come on now. I want you to go with me. We're going to travel back to that day on Calvary when I got up from my knees praying and I had blood coming out of my skin. And they came and they seized me and put me in bondage. They whipped me all through the night. I didn't get any sleep or food to eat. I said, I'm wondering if I should go on. And I wondered what should I do. But I said to my father that I will do your will. Come on. It was brought back to my remembrance as they whipped me with the cast of 39 tails. my body. The pain was excruciating. I came within inches of giving up my life. But I said, no, not now. I got to go on. Understand me now. I need you to go on because it's not over yet. I went on up to Calvary. I took the cross upon my shoulder. When they laid me down upon it, I looked and smiled in their face. They thought they were finishing me, but I was doing my father's work. The nail pierced my head and my feet, and the pain was more than I thought I could bear. But I did not get up off of that cross. I told my father that I would do his will. And I could not stop until the work was finished. I need you to keep on going now. Go on back out there into the field. Don't be focused on what it looks like. You've got to finish the race. When they raise that cross and they stood it up straight. The pain, oh, the pain. I'm telling you now, the pain, oh, the pain. That's why I want you to know I understand the pain you're going through. But you've got to push on through your pain. I pushed on just for you. That's how I know that you can make.
make it. Because I got you in the palm of my hand. Don't give up now. Your victory is just about at hand. I hung there on the cross. And when they thought that they were taking my life, I turned and I looked upon them all. And I pleaded to my Father on high. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. And now I lay down my life. No man take it from me. And I hung there. And I took the last breath. And I said, it is finished. I finished the race. I went all the way. It didn't look good. But I finished it anyhow. It don't look good to you now. As you look over your fields. Everywhere you look, you see barrenness. But I want you to know that in me you have new life. And you have it more abundantly. And just as sure as you have done my work, it will spring up abundantly. But I need you to go on back out to the field. Don't be sorrowful in your well-doing. Don't be cast down and drawn to the side. Don't let the enemy confuse you with all of his tricks and delusion. Remember that I am your God and I will protect you. I have guaranteed you a harvest Amen. and I am reminding you that what you're going through, I have already been there. Amen. There is no pain you can endure that I have not already been subject to. There is no ridicule that can come your way that I have not already heard. There is no disparity to the body that can come and leave you feeling dead. I've already been there and I have all authority and power. Death can't do me no harm. The grave can't hold me and the earth won't hold your seed any longer. If you will just press on to the mark and finish your race. I know that you feel discouraged, but I came to encourage you this morning with this reminder, which comes to us from Psalms 126. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy, and he that goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. This is your hope. I am not mad that I should lie. You do what I've told you to do, and this is my guarantee that you shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Uh -huh. Your harvest is evident. It may not be seen to the human eye, but reach for it in faith. Draw it from the invisible uh -huh. realm. Stretch out on me, and we can call it to come to be. I just need you to finish the razor. Uh -huh. Just finish the razor. Just finish the razor. Just finish the razor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I know, I know that for many, that the enemy has you so caught up that even allowing your mind to be able to receive the fullness of the substance of this powerful word is a difficulty. Mm -hmm. Every word you're met with another word that runs contrary to what God is saying, but that doesn't make them true. That just simply means the enemy's doing what he's supposed to do. And you cannot go forward now of your own strength. And you must not be disillusioned because of your own mental contemplation and visualization of how things should be. Uh, but you must secure yourself within Jesus Christ and acknowledge that things are not what they appear to be. 
and that you are more than a conqueror in this world, not because of your strength, but because of the strength of Jesus Christ that is within you and the work that he has begun in you. He has assured you that it will be completed. Though the days seem long and difficult, you have not been told not to go back out to the field, but you are told to endure, to continue on, that in due season you will reap if you faint not. Amen. You will reap. Now, focus. Take your eyes off of the illusion of the world and look to God, the author and finisher of your faith. Step out on his word. Be in courage. Rejoice even the more. Let praise always be found upon your lips. Know that as you rose this morning, it's because Jesus Christ rose three days after being in the grave, giving you the victory over the day, the death, and the grave. And the seeds that you have sown for the kingdom will bear fruit yes, if will. you faint not. Amen. And your life too shall bear fruit if you faint not. Look not upon the appearance of things, but believe and receive that they will be what the word says they will be. Let them step forth out of the invisible realm and become your new reality. Father God, we thank you and we bless your holy name and we receive this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.